The Bible commands us in 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15 to be able to give a reasonable defense of our faith. This episode will explain how the different races of human beings came into existence and whether or not it is right or wrong to be racist. The Apostle Paul, when speaking to the individuals at Athens, made this fascinating statement about how God hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed, and the bounds of their habitation. Moses also wrote in the book of Genesis, So God created man, and the word is mankind, in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. From these verses, we can deduce that the Bible teaches that we are all one human family, and thus there are no grounds for racism. In fact, we know from a few lines of evidence that all human families go back to Noah and his family. Many different cultures from around the world, including Persian, Syrian, Asian, Grecian, Egyptian, Italian, Russian, Chinese, Indian, Cherokeean, Aztecian, and Hawaiian, to name a few, have accounts of a catastrophic worldwide flood. The fact that cultures from all around the world have a derivative of the Genesis Flood account is indicative that the Genesis Flood was actual history, and that all people are related because we all stem from Noah and his family. The Bible in the opening chapters of the book of Genesis teaches that every human is a descendant from the three sons of Noah, who are descended from Noah and his wife, and that ultimately all human beings are descended from Adam and Eve. After the catastrophic flood, God renewed the same covenant he made with Adam and Eve with Noah. In other words, Noah and his family were instructed, as Eden's original pair was, to populate the earth. However, rather than obey this direction from God, the descendants of Noah decided to defy God by centralizing at the Tower of Babel instead of filling the earth. In response, God initiated an artificial selection scenario. God infused humanity with various languages, not with different racial features, at the Tower of Babel. After God's introduction of the multiplicity of language, post-flood humanity divided along linguistic lines. Once again, God did not create different races of people at the Tower of Babel. Rather, over time, variations began to occur over generations in the smaller population groups, such as variation in skin color. Adam and Eve possessed the genetic information, which in turn gave rise to all of the different races. The variation in different races occur due to non-information gaining mutations, which is the opposite of what the evolutionary theory requires to make progress. Racial characteristics that are observed today are due to the fact that the populations that are dispersed from Babel became reproductively isolated, and thus had only certain portions of the gene pool or the genetic information. Reproductive isolation is defined as the inability of a species to breed successfully with related species due to geographical, behavioral, physiological, or genetic barriers or differences. Now, 
Human beings, of course, can interbreed with one another. However, there is a great amount of genetic diversity. Rather than use racial or skin color differences to distinguish individual people, Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 6 and 29 differentiated people by tribal groupings. People groups can rapidly develop distinctive features. It is a common misconception that it would take eons of time to evolve all the different races because some think that there are multiple skin coloring pigments. In actuality, there is only one skin coloring pigment, known as melanin, which is a dark, natural pigment found in the epidermis or skin adrenal structures. Humans are born with a genetically fixed potential to produce a certain amount of melanin. There are a few different lines of evidence that demonstrate that human history is consistent with the young earth creation model. People groups have not been separated for evolutionary eons, as is evident by the fact that all people are extremely genetically similar. Furthermore, similarities in language speaks against evolutionary eons because the longer the time the languages are separated, would result in more differences accumulating between them. Additionally, the secular timeline of history places the origin of agriculture at around 10,000 years ago, while at the same time claims that mankind has been around for approximately 200,000 years. It is highly unlikely that it took humanity millennia how to figure out how to sow seeds. Finally, the growth rate of the human population is consistent with the scripture's timeline. The Bible says that humanity had to rebuild its population after being reduced to just eight individuals, namely Noah and his family. This population of eight would need to double only 30 times to reach 8.6 billion. Since the flood was about 4,500 years ago, that means it would only need to double every 150 years on average. A simple way to work out the rough growth rate in your head is to use the rule of 72. This states that dividing 72 by the years to double the population provides the annual growth rate. This shows that the population would need to grow by less than 0.5% per year. That's less than a third of the current growth rate. This inbreeding was one of the contributing factors to the fact that the human lifespan was drastically reduced from spans reaching in hundreds of years old to most of humanity only living in their 70s or 80s, as Psalm chapter 90 verse 10 says. In this video's description, there are two articles. One is on what the Bible says about slavery, while the other examines whether or not there are any grounds for racism in the Bible. After reading both articles, you should be able to see that the practice of slavery and the notion of racism are not taught or condoned in the Bible. I pray that you enjoyed this episode of Genesis under a microscope and that you will subscribe to Christ Jesus Ministries YouTube channel. For more faith-building content, continue to watch the rest of the episodes in this series. See the description of this video where you will find a study guide that goes along with this video's topic, and a free book on the Bible, genetics, and racism, scientific articles on the origin of races, an article on multicultural flood stories, and the two articles I referred to on slavery and racism. Take note of the fact that you're one of God's children, not one of Darwin's favored races, and remember, the truth saves.